This video is about not meeting your heroes. Don't make the same mistake that I did. I usually do mountain bike videos on my other channel, but sometimes I'm asked to do paid client work too. You know, commercials for local businesses. And I cannot show up on set with a point and shoot camera that I'm filming on right now or, or an iPhone either. I have been looking for something bigger. We can get some good lenses as well with a superior image. Full frame seems to be what I need. At the same time, I cannot justify spending like 5,000 euros on a camera and lenses when I'm only doing a few paid gigs every year. It just doesn't make sense business-wise. That's where this camera comes into the picture. The Canon 5D Mark II is a legend and it has been used in Hollywood movies. I think even an entire episode of House was shot on this camera. And if it's good enough for Hollywood, it's probably good enough for me too. Or is it? I got this camera for almost no money at all. And I paired it with the most sold lens ever. It's the Plastic Fantastic Nifty 50 from Canon. And I must admit, it's a fantastic lens. It's sharp and produces lots of blurry background when using it right. You need an expensive memory card as well, but then you're pretty much set with a full frame Hollywood video camera. To top it all, this camera can be hacked with an open source software called Magic Lantern, which unlocks different tools, the ability to shoot lots of different resolutions and modes such as Fortin Beat RAW, I think. You don't get that even on modern cameras. So on paper, everything is fine, right? The good thing is that the camera looks like a real camera, and that's what I wanted in the first place. It's a sturdy workhorse that looks at home on set, skin tones sit where they should, and it's not that constant tweaking in post that I need to do on my Sony camera. There's very little color grading needed to make people look natural. But there are a couple of drawbacks with using an old sensor. There is a saying, you shouldn't meet your old heroes, and my expectations for this camera were probably set too high. When there's little to no movement in the frame, the image looks nice, but I think it has some sort of old and soft look to it, which can be pleasing, but it feels I'm stuck with this look. There isn't much I can do about it if I don't like it. I actually think there's too much contrast in the image, weirdly enough. In the end, I can live with the look, but what the hell happened here when there's a movement in the frame? I double-checked all settings, and I cannot for my life understand why this looks so bad. Is it a slow sensor readout, or what is it? It doesn't matter why, honestly, but this footage is unusable to me, and unfortunately, I had to scrap a lot of scenes in this dentist commercial because of this. Getting good footage is about knowing the limits of your camera, I get that. But this limit is something that I can live without. You might think this can be fixed with some tweakings with magic lanterns. Surely there are some settings there that makes the image beautiful, right? But that leads me to the next commercial shoot and the next issue. Here in this interview situation, I had Magic Lantern installed. And of course I got a memory card error. I blame this error on Magic Lantern, which is an experimental software with lots of bugs and glitches. Great for enthusiasts who want to experiment in a spare time, but not very reliable when doing client shoots. The camera needs to work every time. I've tried to use this camera as a B cam to my point and shoot Sony CV1, but I feel I cannot match the images so well. I'm not a professional video maker, I'm only a struggling YouTuber, so I'm sure a professional colorist will get more out of this camera, but it isn't for me. It feels wrong to say it, but the image quality from the tiny CV1 that I'm filming on right now looks so much better to me. There are situations that the camera works well in, but there are too many limitations, so I will ditch this in favor for something else. Getting this was a mistake. I'm thinking about a new APS-C camera to keep the cost down and the weight, like the Sony A6700 or the Fujifilm X-S20, I think. I think those cameras would suit what I do much better. If you're an enthusiast and mainly do photography, sure, you can have some fun using this, but this is an old camera, and the video footage will for the most part look old and not in a good way. 